Welcome to the official Finnovate podcast with Greg Palmer. In 2007, Finnovate set out to create a dynamic fintech showcase featuring live seven-minute demos. For more than a decade, our global event series has brought together tens of thousands of people from across the fintech spectrum to see cutting-edge technologies. Now you can find out what goes on behind the scenes as key influencers and innovators share the stories that they don't get to tell you from stage. Here's a glimpse of what we have in store for this episode. We believe Omnichannel means it's all about the context. It only exists once in our platform. And now your host, Greg Palmer. Welcome to the Finnovate Podcast. This is Greg Palmer. Today we're going to be concluding our series focusing on the Finnovate Fall Best of Show winners. eBankit is the final winner we'll be speaking to, and they have been on stage a couple of different times with a couple of different company names, but their technology has continued to evolve, culminating in a Best of Show win at our flagship New York event. Let's jump now into the interview. Joining me on the podcast today, we have Pete Atkinson, the VP of Sales at eBankit. Pete was on stage as eBankit won Best of Show at Finnovate Fall back in New York in September, and it was really good to see you guys win that trophy. You've been coming to Finnovate for a number of years. It's been fun watching your technology evolve. For those of our audience who haven't heard of you before, can you start with just a, a quick overview of what eBankit's all about? Certainly, certainly Greg. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so e- eBankit is a fintech company. We're based and headquartered out of Portugal, in Porto in Portugal. So we're five years old. We were founded in, in 2014. But an important thing is we, we predate that by sort of 10 years. So the bulk of the, the people within the company worked together for 10 years before that. So we spent about a total of about 15 years building digital banking platforms for customers around the world. So that's, that's pretty much what we do. Portugal is a great place. We have a high tech community here. It's relatively low cost. So we do all our development in-house. Yeah, it's been fun to watch the evolution for you guys. And, and I think that history is one that's, uh, we could probably dive into that and make that into its own episode because I think it is a, a fascinating story. But for our purposes today, I'd really like to focus on this question of omni-channel. You know, this has been, I think, a, a phrase that has evolved and you guys have evolved your technology right there with it. Can you give me your thoughts on, on what that word means now and, and where the standards should be set? Yes, certainly. And you're absolutely right. So omnichannel has been a theme of, of eBanking over the years. And, and if, we, if we go back in sort of self-service banking, so originally there was sort of telephone banking and then internet banking and then, then apps came along. But these were individual disconnected channels. So then, you know, what, what a lot of banks and companies tried to do is sort of bundle them together and then it became multi-channel. And so that means lots of different channels. And now that's evolved to become omnichannel. And there are different definitions. So within eBankit, we believe that omnichannel means it's all about the context, the context of the customer. So the, the customer, the transaction, the payment, the account, it only exists once in our platform. So whether they're using uh, internet banking or a watch or calling a contact center, the, the, the context of what they're doing only achieve, uh, is only once. And also the, the experience is optimized for the channel. So it's not the same experience across all the different channels. It's optimized. Yeah, well, and I think that one of those crucial pieces from an, a customer standpoint is obviously no matter where they engage, it needs to look the same. It needs to feel the same. Obviously, to your point, it needs to be tailored to the specific piece of hardware that they're using to connect. But whether you're on the phone or on a mobile or whatever the case may be, you want it to be a consistent experience, which I think is something that you guys have really done a good job of, of showcasing at Finnovate in your various times on stage. Now, one of the things that I think has really played a, a very interesting role role in this discussion is the role of open banking. You know, a a few of us, when we first heard about PSD2 and kind of the open banking changes in in Europe, we're looking at this thinking, you know, this could actually be a really good thing for innovators as they look to really embrace their customers in this way. Have you found that? Would you agree with that statement that it has been good for innovators? Yeah, no, no, I absolutely, I would really agree with that. Yes, it is a good thing. So at eBankit, we we first introduced, we have a we have a part of our product called the API Gateway. So we introduced this and launched it back in 2016. So this was designed to to do a few things to embrace PSD2. So that's the European initiative for connecting for open banking, but also open banking generally. So with this, it allows the banks or credit unions to then you know connect to other fintechs to embrace fintech so if they see something they really like at innovate they can actually partner with them and bring that in and connect through in our case our, our api gateway so for the banks it makes a lot of sense for consumers it also makes sense so once you know once this is in, in place properly it means all their financial products can be viewed in a single view once we start to add things like smart you know ai driven tools and pfm 
suddenly it gets really interesting because then some proper decisions and you know product selections and you know things like that optim uh, optimized returns can be made based on a, a proper view across that whole uh, you know financial uh, instruments yeah yeah I, I think that's all true and i think one of the other pieces that you know that you and i talked about before we actually got on the line here was how it can really change the game for smaller financial institutions as well and make them competitive by allowing them to offer the same services as their larger competitors um is that something that that you've seen or, or actually could you just expand on that a little bit sure yeah yeah no exactly that we, we do we do see this so so you know it's not just about the the large banks with the the big uh, funds to, to be able to do this it's you know smaller specialist fintech companies that can launch you know apps that, that do this so, so they you know they their whole purpose is to bring all this data and information together present it in a beautiful intuitive way and then provide also the tools on top of that to allow proper decisions to be made yeah, and I think one of those pieces, well, you know, coming back to the, the omni-channel discussion, when you talk about the end result, the, the consumer having this experience, I think it just makes it possible for any number of different institutions to offer that experience and it really to, to focus on how that customer actually feels, the challenges that they're going through. And, and this is something I think you guys did a great job of showcasing at your demo at Finnovate Fall, you know, the, the real world applications and getting the audience to kind of feel the value of your technology, put themselves in the position of the, the customers who will end up using it. And, you know, looking at how much time you spent making sure that message came through in your demo, I'm guessing that getting bankers to really understand that customer viewpoint has been a challenge. It's something that is historically a little bit difficult. Can you talk about that challenge a little bit? And you know, is it getting better? Are bankers getting better at, at putting themselves in the position of their customers? Yeah, uh, it's a great question. The short answer is yes, it is getting better. But if, if we go back not very far, so even just six years ago in, in Europe, so back to 2014, the average amount of time that an individual held a, a retail bank account was 26 years. That's the average. I mean, that's incredible. And, and this was done not because they were gloriously happy with the service or the costs that were provided, but it was because back then there was very little differentiation. So, you know, very little between the different services. Um, and also switching was, was a real pain. So in the early days the, for the banks, they're, they're, the main driver around digital banking was all about self-service, all about cost reduction. And so there was little or no innovation required or, you know, or demanded. Um, and, then, and then the world changed. So suddenly, you know, the banking disruptors arrived and we, you know, we see them we see them all over the place and you know and every single every week we see a whole load of new ones which is really really exciting um, so so this presents a challenge for, for all the different banks so the large ones they've got the money and resources but they don't have the time it often takes a long time to, to, to do this to compete so they need solutions you know the mid-sized banks are trying to compete with the large ones and the small ones and the digital disruptors um, and then you've got the small banks which are, you know sometimes uh, you know, have uh, not a lot of money or resources, but they also have to provide this, this enhanced service. And then you've got the digital, you know, the startups, the, you know, the, the disruptors. And they've got no legacy systems. They can just pick best of breed and a faster market. So all of these four groups um, have this requirement. They're all now beginning to, they know they have to innovate. Um, and this is, for us at eBankit, this is really exciting. And these are the conversations we have on a daily basis. So which of those four groups do you think does the best job of anticipating what their customers want and really you know, putting the customers first? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's by definition, it's the, it's the, it's the last, the digital disruptors. So, so these, are, these are the group that have, usually they have a, you know, it's a single product premise. So they will have, there'll be one thing that will do really, really well. Um, and, and then they go and, you know, and they'll offer it. And so for you know, Revolut is a great example of, out, of the, out of the UK. So there we are. They, there's one thing, it's about cash management, switching currencies. There was a big problem in the market. They've, you know, they've fixed that. And they've also disrupted. So they've caused all the other banks to have to offer similar services. So the consumer wins in that particular case. Um, and I think you know, Revolut will continue to be successful. And there will be you know, a lot of other ones coming that are, you know, have similar models. But, but, uh, but all of those four groups all um, have to take this challenge up, otherwise they will disappear. I think that's something that we've seen on stage at Finnovate come through very strongly is the idea that the, the companies that focus on their customers and really put themselves in their position are able to empathize with and understand what they're feeling are the ones who end up attracting customers, particularly I think modern banking customers. And, and this is I think one, an area that's been discussed a lot. There's been a lot of research that has been done as people try and quantify this. But from your standpoint, you know, how, how do you think of the modern banking customer? You know, what are their priorities? What are they looking for that they're not getting from the market right now? 
Sure. Well, it's another really good question. So I, I think I would split this into two. There's the sort of there's the current you know current customer, the modern customer, but they're the sort of more mature customer. So they've been around for a while, and they may or may not have embraced fintech. So the banks and credit unions have to provide them with the, you know the facilities to be able to do their banking. So that might be it's back to the omnichannel discussion. It might be phoning a contact center and getting a transfer done. It might be using a really simple app that provides them with the basic functionality. But now if we look at the, you know, perhaps the more interesting, exciting, which is the new, you know, the millennial generation. So this is a generation that genuinely, they have an attention span of three seconds. This is, this is a, this is fact. This is not just made up. Three seconds. Now, you know, yours, Greg, and mine is around about nine seconds and a goldfish is about eight seconds. So we, we start to see that, that, that actually a millennial is a real challenge. So, so also within that group, there is, there's little or no brand loyalty to any financial organization. It's, it's just, that it doesn't happen. So it's all for them, it's all about the experience. And again, it's about an optimized experience. So things like you know, campaigns and offers and suggestions, for example, have to be absolutely on the money for, those, for that group. Otherwise, they are completely dismissed. So ease of use, it's got to be simple. So an example, a real example is, well, how do you transfer $10 or euros or pounds or something to, to your friend because you've shared a lunch or done something? Now, in almost all banking apps, that's a real pain. You have to put in lots of numbers, data. You have to check things out. You might have to do another second factor authentication on it. How do they do it? But this is a group that, you know, they use WhatsApp or, or Snapchat or Instagram every, you know, constantly throughout the day. Those are the channels that they will want to use. So, you know, part of, you know, part of this open banking, part of opening up these channels will be connecting to services like those and Facebook and others to actually use that as a, as a channel for you know, transferring funds. And that should be part of core banking. Yeah, yeah, no, you, you heard the bell go off there, but I think there's a lot of really good insight there. And the way you think about customers is, I think, really unique. And I think that's one of those things that has made eBank it successful because you look at them and really cater to their actual individual needs. And I'll say, you give me a little bit more credit than I deserve maybe saying I've got an attention span of nine seconds. I don't know, I, I'm not positive I'm above a goldfish, <laughs> but I appreciate the benefit of the doubt. But I think it really highlights this fact that you have to be there in front of them in an immediate sense. It has to be something that will engage them right away. And to be fair, I, I can't see why that's not possible. One of the things that always fascinates me about the arena of fintech is you have kind of bankers complaining our customers want this and it's unreasonable. And then I always sort of in the back of my mind think, well, why is that unreasonable? Why, why can't you do that? So you got three seconds, use it. Anyway, that's a topic for a longer conversation, I'm sure. Thank you again for joining me on the podcast. And for anybody who's interested in checking it out, their video, their best of show winning video is up at finnovate.com slash videos. You can find them there as well as see some of their earlier videos and see the evolution of the products and how they came to be. Pete, been a pleasure chatting with you. Thanks again. And I'm sure we'll see you on stage again at Finnovate at some point down the road. Yeah, we'll be there. Thank you, Greg. A couple of interesting takeaways from that one. I especially like the way they look at banking customers and really dive into the best way to engage them. And I love the way that they view open banking as well. I encourage you to check out their video. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this podcast, this does conclude all of the conversations around our Finnovate Fall Best of Show winners. You can see all of those demo videos at finnovate.com slash videos. All of our Best of Show winning demos are up there along with all of the other companies who demoed at Finnovate Fall a lot of great content for you to take a look at. You can also go through our podcast archives and review any conversations that you might have missed with some of the other best of show winners. We are going to take a two week break for the new year. We'll come back in early January with more episodes for you. In the meantime, check out Finnovate.com, your source for all the information you need on anything Finnovate is working on. And don't forget the discount code Finnovate Podcast will save you 20% off of tickets to any event coming up in our portfolio. Thanks and happy new year. Thanks for joining us on the Finnovate podcast this week. Brought to you by the team behind Finnovate and produced in association with Provoke Media. Make sure you tell your friends about the show, leave us a review on iTunes, SoundCloud or wherever you listen to our show and check out our upcoming events at finnovate.com.